What's up, y'all? So recently I posted a video on my battles with uh, my withdrawals when I came off of Effexor uh, 20 years ago. How horrible of a nightmare that was. I vowed to have never been put on another drug that would make me feel that way again. And for 20 years, I stuck to that. So in um, 21, when the Delta variant was going around, um, my wife and I went down reluctantly and got the jab. Uh, first one, no big deal. After the second one, uh, for four days, I suffered torrential nosebleeds. I mean, like torrential nosebleeds. Thought I was gonna have to go to the ER for it. And then roughly a month after that, I'm sitting at work, had just finished eating my overnight oats, and from my knees down, felt like somebody had doused my legs in gasoline and lit my calves and feet on fire. Um, it was the onset of insane neuropathy. I don't drink, I'm not diabetic, I'm not pre-diabetic. Um, I am six foot four, uh, 170 pounds, healthy individual. And I got neuropathy like that. I suffered with um, neuropathy symptoms from uh, October of 21 Till I finally got into a neurologist uh, in Ju June or July of 22. Uh, we had an initial consultation um, and then we had an evaluation where he tested my nerves to find out that I did have some medium nerve neuropathy. Uh, he said, I'm gonna put you on a drug that's real mild. Um, I understand how you are because I told him about me and pills and that I do not want to be on anything like effects or he said, this is a real mild drug. You don't have to worry about becoming addicted to it. It's not addictive substance. And I was like, cool, man, let's do it. That was it. That's that. That was all that I was told. And he put me on gabapentin. I came home. I took that drug that night, just like I was supposed to. And guess what? For the first time in almost a year, I slept all night long. Some people say gabapentin doesn't kick in immediately. For me, it did. It was instantaneous relief on my nerves. But for weeks to come, my head grew cloudier and cloudier and cloudier. I couldn't remember stuff. I'm telling you, my wife makes these amazing um, black bean, cauliflower, and sweet potato tacos that she puts this awesome crema sauce on that she makes out of uh, cashews. She blends it up, makes it herself. They are delicious. And we were having fish tacos one night, and I'm standing there looking at the aioli, and I, I ask her, I'm like, what is that other stuff that we put some sauce on? And she's looking at me across the living room like, I have lost my mind. Because I don't have a bad memory. I got a great memory. And I could not for the life of me remember what it was. But around the same time that I'm having these really bad memory problems, I got up for work one morning. I remember getting up and walking into the bathroom and I'm standing there, I'm about to be, hadn't even unzipped yet. I'm standing there, I was like, man, I just don't really feel like messing with work today. Next thing I know, I'm laying on the ground and I feel myself bumping into the cabinet like this. And April's standing over me going, Jeff, Jeff, hey, are you okay? Jeff, are you okay? I'm like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. She goes, did you fall? I, I don't know. Something in my brain rewired, reset. I'm telling you, for weeks, I felt like my brain was completely scrambled. This had done something to me that, that not even a fexer had done. But, you know, gabapentin, it doesn't fix the problems of your nerves. It doesn't help your nerves at all. It affects the receptors in your brain. So when it dulls the receptors that you're feeling these misfires in your legs, it also dulls other stuff in your brain. So I call the doctor and I tell him, listen, this is what happened. And nurse practitioner calls me back and says, well, the doctor says, uh, come off of it. You know, quit taking gabapentin for a week, see how you feel. Now I've been on it for roughly six weeks when this episode happened. Okay. And he says, come off it for a week and see how you feel. So that night 
I'm like, okay, I'm not going to take it. It's going to suck. My neuropathy is going to come back. It's going to suck. But, you know, hey, maybe I'll start getting my head back and I won't have whatever happened today. So I'm laying there in bed and I usually take my pill at about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And at about 1, 30, 2 o'clock, I start getting the the zombie arms. The Anybody who's gone through withdrawals knows this feeling of your body just becoming really tense and you're like, your legs move and you you can't control your arms. You're just kind of, I mean, it, it's it's uncontrollable. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. No, we're, we're talking effects are again. We're talking, I feel the boom, 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 boom. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, 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 I can't do this. I had immediate PTSD flashbacks to Effexor. So I go in the bathroom, I take one of those pills, I put it in my mouth and I chew it. That, that I had just basically had a blackout seizure where I almost split my eye open and my wife thought that I died. And I'm willing because the way this thing is making my body feel to go throw another pill in my mouth. Talk about feeling like a slave. So, I call a doctor back. Hey, listen, y'all got me on 300 milligrams. I want to come down. I don't want to be on this stuff anymore. I want to taper off of it. So, they prescribed me uh, 100 milligrams. Well, I tried dropping from 300 to 100, and that was too quick. The night that I did that, oh, man, that was a bad night. So, I just started doubling up on the 100s and started taking 200 milligrams easier transition okay so i'm on that for a couple of weeks and then i drop down to 100 milligrams and i'm on 100 milligrams for a while a couple of months because quite honestly i just didn't want to go through the effects of withdrawals i didn't want to go through that that torture and torment that i went through before and so i'm looking things up and i'm like okay I'm going to go about this a lot more scientific than I did when I came off of Effexor. So what I did was I got myself a fairly cheap digital scale. But, I mean, you know, I wasn't going to spend $300 on it. I figured I could get a, uh, I think it was like 20 bucks for a little digital scale that weighed micrograms or milligrams. Sorry. So what I did was I took the 100, pill, the 100 milligram capsules and I split them open and I poured them onto the scale to where I started going from 100 milligrams down to 70 milligrams. And I was on 70 milligrams for a while. And I even bought the little, uh, the, the capsules that you can buy off of, um, off Amazon. Um, I'll put links to all the things that I've done to change the, how I came off this. So I put, uh, I, I pour the stuff into the capsules, seal them up, pop them. 70 milligrams, no change. I'm good, all right? Don't feel anything. Then I decide, all right, I'm ready to drop down to 50 milligrams. When I drop to 50 milligrams, here's where things kind of start getting interesting. 50 milligrams was a low enough dose. Now, mind you, mind you, the 100 milligram is a children's dose. And when I missed it one night because I forgot to take it while I was taking my plethora of pills, I started having a whole... This is out of control stuff, okay? So even missing 100 milligrams will make you flip out when you go from 100 to zero. Now, when I drop down to 50, I start having blurry vision halfway through the day. So I take them 11 o'clock at night, around 1, 1, 1 p.m. the next day, my eyes start getting blurry. I start getting a bad headache. I, I start, um, start getting to the point where I'm super irritable. My body is definitely on edge. And so I'm like, okay, so this is why you, to be able to make your 24 hour mark, you're gonna have to be on a little bit higher dose. So I stayed there at 50 and then I decided it was, I was gonna have a long weekend and I decided this is gonna be the weekend that I quit. So that's what I did. I endure 50 milligrams for a couple of weeks and then I finally just quit. Now, to be honest, it was a smooth transition. Now, it did kind of suck because the neuropathy feelings came back. But here's what I learned through all of this. I started YouTube and stuff, which I should have done long before this. 
was that there are ways to heal the nerves that are peripheral neuropathy. You can't heal them with, 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 uh, with gabapentin. You can't heal them with tramadol. Those are band-aids for gunshot wounds. They don't fix anything. You know, these pharmacy companies, they don't want you to, to fix anything. They want you to stay on this stuff for the rest of your life. So I started taking uh, R-alpha-lipoic acid. I started taking benfotamine. I started taking uh, vitamin B12 and B1 and B6 and all these things that actually help rebuild the nerves. Things that my doctor never told me about. MCT oil. You know, medium chain triglycerides. The one that's got the three different in it. I'm, I'll leave links to all this stuff in here. You can get off of this stuff. You don't have to live in a fog, in a cloud. You're going to have to change your diet. Because sugar... I mean, I'm not, I'm not diabetic, but I do every now and then like some ice cream. Well, I've noticed on the days that I have ice cream, guess what? My feet and legs hurt. It sucks. So you're going to have to change your diet. You're going to have to change your things. You're going to have to take some supplements that will help you out in rebuilding the nerves. But you got to get off of that stuff. That drug is not good for you. It clouds your mind. I talked to a speed bagger the other night that called me. He said, man, I'm in all this pain and uh, went through neuropathy and they put me on this new stuff, but my mind just feels all cloudy and stuff. I said, what they put you on? He said, tramadol and gabapentin. Of course they did. They put people on that stuff for everything. When I went in and talked to my doctor about this, told him about all the reactions that I was having with it, um, he said, but it's not addictive. I go, well, it's not? Why don't you go on YouTube and tell me it's not? Look at all the people that are on YouTube that are talking about this and tell me that's not. He goes, well, let me rephrase this. The FDA is about to classify it as a, uh, as a class two uh, narcotic and it is about to become considered addictive and they're going to start treating it differently. So you can get off of it. I am not a doctor. If you want to get off of it, come up with a plan, talk to your doctor, whatever, but get off this stuff. There are other ways to heal yourself. They've, they've been curing neuropathy in Europe for 30 years. The U.S. doesn't want you to do it. So if y'all have any questions, Give me a shout, send me a message. I respond to everybody and, and we'll figure out how to get you off of this stuff and start healing you. It takes a while. I've been off of it for a month and a half now. I sleep a lot better with the stuff that I've been taking. I, my neuropathy is doing much, much better. So there is hope. I promise you there is hope, but you're gonna have to put forth some effort into this, okay? So if you got any questions, hit me up. Um, you can email me, you can, however you want to get a hold of me, the, uh, uh the thrasher house at gmail.com. Um, you know, it's, it's also in my link. So just message me and, and we'll talk about, it. we'll, we'll help you get off this stuff. There is hope y'all. I promise. Have a good one.